Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we are going to use our top five to discuss smartphones and privacy. I'm going to give you five smartphone privacy tips. Now, obviously, if you're going to carry around a smartphone, you are never going to be able to maintain perfect privacy. That is just a sad reality of smartphones. Whether it's your cellular carrier, always knowing your location based upon pinging uh, your cellular towers, or things like Google constantly tracking your location, even if you're, uh, even after you have said not to do that. So we're gonna to talk today about five general tips that I came up with for having your individual phone and um, having the, the best privacy if you want to have a smartphone with you. Number one, we're going to avoid G apps. So G apps, of course, is short for Google apps. And by the way, this isn't just an Android phone thing, although G-Apps technically is an Android thing, but there are similar applications across your Apple devices as well. You can get your Google Maps, you can get your, your Gmail, you can get all these types of things. You want to avoid all of those applications, whether they be on your Apple device or whether they be on your Android device, all right? Um, now, of course, if you want the best of all options, you want to install a custom ROM that does not have G apps at all. Okay, that's what I have done. My phone runs Lineage, and I have skipped the steps where you can add Google apps to your custom ROM. So, uh, of course, um, there, are, uh, there are some steps about how to build your um, your information with uh, Lineage, and this is actually part of where they're talking about where to get the applications. Of course, nowadays you need to register to install your G apps on your own device, uh, which means that they have even more information. So I find the best case uh, possible is simply to avoid any G apps. Assume that you are not going to um, install a custom ROM on your device. You just want a, a device, you want to keep it stock. It's a very simple matter. You actually can skip through and not enter a Google address into the device. Okay, they really want you to. They're going to annoy you constantly, but you can avoid putting a Google uh, login into your individual device. Now, of course, that brings us to the topic we're going to talk to last, but we'll get there. I'm not going to unveil exactly what that is. Uh, but you can actually do everything that you want on a smartphone. You can activate it. You can use it. You can even put apps on it without giving them a Google login. And that is the best thing that you can do is avoid a Google login. Number two is use F-Droid. This is how you avoid Google uh, apps and other um, other connections and Google logins. F-Droid is, uh, it is an application that you can get which manages just like Google Play, only there's no login and the only applications are open source. For me, I don't even put this on the device. I actually manually install everything. Now the good thing about F-Droid is you can go right to their website from your device and you can download all of the apps um, outside of having F-Droid. Now, if you want the better, more app store type experience and you want the ability to have things automatically update, you will need the F-Droid app, all right? Uh, and so let's have a look at what F-Droid looks like. So have a look at their website, it's f-droid.org. And then here you can download F-Droid, which is its own, uh, its own application. And that will basically add a open source software store on your device. Now you can actually come over here and search for anything as well. So if you want maps, you can go ahead and do a search for maps and that's going to show you your options. Uh, I think the most, um, uh, for whatever reason, I'm not seeing, uh, there's pocket maps, there's one. I'm not seeing the um, uh, OSM and which is the most popular one. That may not be on F-Droid, I don't remember. Um, but uh, you can type in a variety of, uh, of different, um, uh, things to look for any type of functionality. You can search by the application name. So there's actually how to get the OSM and. Um, so you can actually search for anything that you happen to need um, or you can search for an individual app as well. Again, what I usually do is I just pull up the website 
and I download um, download the apps directly. So if you were to go in and do any given application, uh, go and click on any given application, and it will give you the option to download FDroid because it always wants to push that. But you can actually skip through and just download the APK directly and sideload it into your device. There are a few other uh, a few other uh, places like this. If you know of another good one that pushes only open source apps, go ahead and leave it in the comments down below. Uh, but I recommend looking at using FDroid for all of your application needs so that you can actually get applications without having to get logged into a Google account first. Number three, do not log into any unnecessary accounts, okay? Use your login type stuff for your home computer where you're not carrying it around and where they don't have access to everywhere that you have been, whether that be a website version or whether that be an actual application. And that is uh, uh, something to keep in mind. Just make sure that uh, you are not just using your phone like it's your any other basic computer. You're not logging into your banking. You're not logging into uh, Google. You're not logging into Apple. You're not logging into Amazon. All these types of things. You want to take an extra step of caution um, to make sure that you are shielding yourself because once you log in, that device is now de-anonymized. Obviously, your cell carrier knows where you are based upon the location data. That's stuff that could get used to push to inside of ad networks if you, uh, if you actually um, have allowed them to do that or uh, if you allow ads in your device at all. I didn't include it in the, in the system because it's a more complicated thing how you can block that entirely um, outside of uh, plugins. But uh, the reality is once you log into account, that individual account holder has now de-anonymized you, has access to all the information on your device, including your um, your device name, location, uh, pretty much everything else. Logging into something on a mobile device is a lot more dangerous than logging in on a desktop computer. So do not log into any unnecessary accounts. Number four. Use Tor or VPNs where you are able to. Now, I'm not certain if there is a Tor functionality for Apple at this point in time, but you can definitely use VPNs. Okay, for Android, there are a few options for using Tor. My favorite is Orbot. I run this and it allows you to set any individual system process as going through your regular internet or through the Tor network. There's some things I always put through the regular internet, such as my email, because I don't want that rooted all over different places. But anything else, like my main web browser, I definitely want going through the Tor network. This way, when I'm out on a site, when I'm doing some searchability, whatever type of thing I'm doing, it goes through the Tor network and it makes it a lot harder for the end site to, enable, um, to be enabled to locate where I'm at or who I am or things like that. So I like Orbot and you should always install this on your Android device because it's going to enable you to set certain processes to use the Tor network and certain processes to not. And then you can go into the screen and customize which one you want to do. There is in Alpha, there is a Tor browser bundle for the Android device. Uh, this is an alpha. I've been using it for about two weeks now, and it is very good. It does get around the Cloudflare limitation of the Tor network. Um, so, of course, if you come over to the uh, Tor, um, the torproject.org, find to get the Tor browser. Uh, it's not under stable, but if you come on down to experimental Tor browser, you'll find the Windows, the Mac OS, the Linux, and right over here is the Android. So just click on this guy over here. It's going to give you the uh, option to download the APK for this. Download the APK, install that, and it is basically the exact Tor bundle for your smartphone. So uh, you can use this uh, if you don't want to use Orbot or you can't use Orbot on everything else and you are on an Android device, definitely sideload this APK to have the Tor browser bundle. Now I use this, but I also use Firefox Klar and Chromium through the Tor network and I have Firefox and the built-in browser not on the Tor network for when I need a browser that is not necessarily connected to Tor. 
So this is certainly something you want to look into is the Tor network. Also use VPNs. I'll use this opportunity to tell you that I have two affiliate accounts for VPNs. You can get both of these in the description down below. Um, both of these will support the uh, OpenVPN protocol, which will work with the available on the F-Droid OpenVPN protocol, which will work on Android. Uh, you can also get the application for your Apple device as well, although I think you need the iTunes store for that, but it's a free download. All right, so um, private internet access is one of these. This will allow you to have five simultaneous connections. Uh, you can get um, two years of it for a total of $70, so $70 for two years of access. Uh, $40 for one whole year of access, or you can pick it up individually at $7 per month. There'll be a link in the description down below for this. Uh, I use my own in-house link shortener. It is TL, um, uh, TLM uh, for Think Life Media, tlm.li forward slash PIA. And I also have Nord, uh, tlm.li forward slash Nord will get you this one. Nord will get you if you want two years, uh, I think it's two years access. It's, um, uh, let's see, a two year plan, it's uh, 95. Um, this one supports five simultaneous devices and it is outside of the 14 eyes, which makes it more attractive to some people. Of course, we have one month, one year, six month and two year plans available. Uh, these do actually, you can purchase them with cryptocurrency as well. There will be links for those in the description down below under affiliates. Number five, accept a little bit of inconvenience. Convenience and privacy are definitely two ends of the spectrum. The more convenient you want to be, the more privacy you're going to have to give up. It is highly convenient for your phone to always know where you are and give you a map and a device and you'll be logged into a Google account and all this information is going to be made available to Google and any hackers who attach to that information. But if you want to be more private, you're going to definitely increase the inconvenience in your life. I implore you, be more inconvenient. The thing about a smartphone, it is great to have a device that I can carry with me. I can check the internet if I need to. I can check my email if I need to and I can share the uh, hotspot with my mobile device as, or, or my, my computer as I'm out doing work in maybe a coffee shop or something without having to get on an insecure uh, open wireless network. Great things for that. The bad thing about the smartphone is it can log a lot of what you do. It can log everything that you do. It can log in where you are. It can connect with Bluetooth connectivity and connect to things automatically you don't even know it's connecting to. It can automatically connect to open wireless networks when you don't even realize it's doing that, and that opens up a lot of vulnerabilities and a lot of privacy concerns. Be inconvenient. Turn those features off. Keep Bluetooth turned off when you are not using it. Keep Wi-Fi turned off when you are not using it. Okay, do those types of things. Get into the habit. Toggle it on when you're in your home network or in a safe place. Toggle those things off when you are not in a safe place. All right. Um, be inconvenient by not downloading all of the apps to everything. Don't download excess apps and avoid anything which asks for any information which seems a little out of the ordinary. In short, be a little bit more inconvenient for your better good, for your ultimate privacy. And by the way, if you think that you have nothing to hide, so you don't have anything to worry about, that's saying you have nothing to say, so why worry about free speech? Okay, just keep that in mind. Uh, so there's my five smartphone tips for privacy. Add your tips in the description down below. I hope you've enjoyed this video from Switched to Linux. If you'd like to help support the channel, check out the links at the top. There is another video over here. You can check out our Patreon page down here. And you can check out shop.switchtolinux.com for information on a t-shirt like this or some other designs. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.